Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We're doing everything on a brand new setup because I'm in Germany for Gamescom. We finally made it here uh, after 10 hours of layovers in Chicago. We made it. Now, um, there's a lot of noise I in this room. I've been waiting a long time for this. Hopefully you can hear Don't me okay. Make me wait I hope so. Uh, if there's any technical difficulties, we'll sort them out. Don't worry, but we have Kel'Thuzad being added into Heroes of the Storm, and you know that means just one thing. We have to do one thing. A really long, a really boring, a very drawn out first look at the newest hero to enter the Nexus. Kel'Thuzad. My patience is. Your right ears lonely. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so. Test. Good thing I'm always prepared. They have a giant mixer next to me. It's like the size of my house. It's, it's, it's pretty, Indeed. it's pretty big. It's pretty intimidating. It has an, like an LED screen on it. So if anything isn't working quite right, we'll call someone over and they'll fix it. But Kel'Thuzad is a ranged assassin. We're going to be taking a look at him in try mode today. If you do not want to watch a long, boring, drawn out video, and that's on you. It's all right, interloper. Here, if it is, Mono, we might be able to fix it real quick. Mistakes. Hold on. Uh, the audio. There we go, team. How's that? That should have fixed it, I hope. Anyway, uh, Kel'Thuzad's dance. He brings out Mrs. Bigglesworth. Look at this. Look at this. He brings out his cat. It's like, it's one of the cutest things I've ever seen. Here, let me try to restart. We'll see if that fixes it. Please hold. All right, we should be live again. I've been told by a, a lovely sound man that uh, we should be good to go. The pan was set a little bit further to the left than it should have been, or to the right. But uh, I think we're good now. Okay. so. Kel'Thuzad, where were we? Do you want to see the dance again? Do you want to see the... Isn't that good? Isn't that good? His taunt? Pretty, pretty basic. It's a taunt. It does what it wants. If it's still messed up, guys, we'll just have to fix it out, uh, out after the stream. Choose a talent. So, unfortunately, we're live. We're doing it. Complications happen, but we just have to go with it. So take, take one headphone off and listen to a loved one speaking to you kindly in the other ear. And then we'll try to sort this out. It'll be easier if they have an example to listen to. So unfortunately, we have to give them an example to listen to. Hmm. So Kalthazad's abilities, if we take a look at him now, his Q, so first of all, if you like Chromie, you're probably gonna like this. It's a lot of the same stuff. So his Q ability, Death and Decay, straight line skill shot, that is going to impact whatever you're going to shoot at. Uh, on a, But it has a delay with the cast, right? So it has basically a wind-up time, just like Chromie's Q does. Uh, after it impacts the target, after 0.5 seconds, he's launching the orb. It's going to deal 161 impact damage at level 3. And then the explosion is going to leave behind a pool of decay that lasts for 2 seconds. And that's going to continue to deal damage over time. He does have some talents in his build that allow him to like set that up to be like a little bit more lane clear focus. Like you can increase the range of this a little bit, and uh, it, it seems like it'd be pretty good for that. I haven't tried it yet. I've only played him in one and a half games because I was pulled away to do other things. But his W ability, Frost Nova, once again. This ability has a delay effect as well. And what this does is it's going to create a ground effect. And then after a short delay, it's going to freeze any enemies that happen to be in the area. Um, it does explode after one second. Deals more damage than our Q, at least on the initial impact. Uh, if the enemies are in the center, they're going to be rooted. If they're on the outside, they're going to be slowed. And you may be noticing that we're getting quest up, up uh, updates here. Yeah, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Choose a talent. Uh, our E ability is 
really cool. It's called Chains of Kel'Thuzad, and we're going to launch out a chain that deals 107 damage to the first enemy or structure. In That's important. Time. First enemy or structure that it hits. My beard's looking excellent, sir. Thank you for the donation. So, um, let's assume that we can get Arthas to run away. So I can shoot this into the wall and then fire it back at him. And if that impacts uh, Arthas, it'll pull him into that wall and keep him stationary there. As my character runs forward and dies because I was doing hand mo Yo, if you can't talk with your hands, then what is, it's not worth living, okay? Uh, for those of you just joining, I know the sound may be a little weird in this first stream. We will fix it right after this theory crafting video. I'm gonna be here all week streaming, so I just need to give them an example of uh, what the problem may be. So, uh, again, it's hard to show if he doesn't run to the building, but it's like when you cast this into something, then the something you cast it on becomes the tower at which the skill comes from. So originally it's firing for me, right? And I throw it that way. But then my skill shot is directed off of whatever we impact. And the whole idea is you want to link as in, uh, you want to link two people together to try to get them uh, locked down, so your other abilities can kind of kick in and and do their damage over time or delayed effect or, or things like that. Uh, his trait is called Master of the Cold Dark. Uh, gain one blight every time a hero is rooted by Frost Nova or hit by chains of Kel'Thuzad. So remember, Frost Nova, you have to do the center circle. For the chains, it's it's whatever you whatever you, you know, just hit him. It's just a skill shot. Just throw it at him. It's a lot easier. Uh, after gaining 15 blight, the cooldown of all basic abilities is reduced by two seconds. So, um, base abilities for Death and Decay, base um, cooldown, six seconds, then 10 for Frost Nova, and then 12 for Chains of Kel'Thuzad. So it really does make it so he can spam his Q all the time and try to get this stuff together. Um, after gaining 30 blight, you gain 75% spell power. That means you deal an increased 75% damage. Is, is everyone on board with that? Does everyone understand how amazing that is? A mage that all of a sudden gets a 75% damage increase. Just for landing your abilities, just for doing this, you get better and it fills up your blight meter. After you hit 30 skill shots, 75% damage increase. I think that's crazy. I, th I think that is absurd. By the way, in the background, there is going to be, like, they're doing rehearsals today over on the main stage. Uh, in future streams, like tomorrow maybe, when they start to um, actually present stuff up there, we may actually be able to look in and I can talk about what's going on on the main stage. But as of right now, you're just going to hear noise periodically in the background in your one ear that you can hear me in right now. And uh, I hope uh, it's not too distracting. Uh, so, taking a look at talents, level one, we have the Plague Lands. Increase death and decay duration by one second. After getting 30 Blight, increase the radius of death and decay's yes, pool by 30%. So, if you get this and your Q quest done, you're going to have a three second cooldown on death and decay. Choose a talent. Which, basically, it basically means you can use it all the time. That was really loud. Maybe that was just really loud to me. Yo, this mixer has like 10 million. I, I say 10, it's like 15 knobs. But yeah, if you uh, complete your quests and you pick up that talent, you're gonna be able to throw this out all the damn time. Uh, it seems like it's bugged and not getting the cooldown reduction that it should be. Uh, or, yeah, we can restart real quick. Or the problem was that I already had the quest completed and didn't look at the time. So we can take a look at that really quick. But um, when I was playing him against all of the NA yes, people that came to... A test. That was normal. Okay, so it's bugged right now. I'm not getting the cooldown reduction. That's fine. They'll fix it. Don't you worry. Um, then the Blighted Frost is going to be another talent that we can pick up here. Frost Nova deals 50% more damage to enemies in the center. After gaining 30 Blight, increase Frost Nova's root duration by 0.5 seconds. So again, this is tied to his baseline trait where you're going to be stacking up stuff all the time and you're going to be trying to get as, mu as many skill shots landed as early in the game as possible. It's going to be really important that you're accurate in these. 
and it's going to make your W deal more damage, and it's going to make it root for another half second. So one and a half second root on that. Good if you can land it, in my experience. Very hard to land. Very hard to land. Barb Chains increases Kel'Thuzad's damage by 125% after gaining 30 Blight. Chains of Kel'Thuzad reduces the armor of pulled heroes by 15 for 4 seconds. Now as far as armor reduction goes, that's not a big number. Uh, the normal number you would see for like a Hunter's Mark or things like that would be about, well, be exactly 25%. So 15% isn't that much, but I think you're applying it to both targets. Again, in a situation like this, that's kind of hard to test. But my favorite talent in the early game is the Barb Chains, just because I think out of all of his skill shots, the Chains of Kel'Thuzad is really easy to land in team fights specifically. And I feel like his wave clear is good enough that we don't really need to invest anymore in Plague Lance. Again, in the limited amount of time that I've played him. So we're going to go for Barb Chains here. Set our level up to 20. Choose and take a look at the rest of the talents that Choose we talent have pass. on tap here. Power. Strip Shields, pulling a hero with Chains of Kel'Thuzad grants Kel'Thuzad a permanent 246 shield stacking two times. So choice. if you pull Choose people, again, kind of like I can't. I just uh, I can't show you. <laughs> Hold up. Hold toggle cooldowns. Yes, run into the tower! So yeah, if I do that, we get a shield. If I do that, we get a shield. And that shield just kind of maintains. Now, the shield isn't very big, um, but in a fight, you, I mean, you, it's not that hard to pull people around. The skill shot range is actually not bad. Um, and there's also some other stuff in the talent tree that's going to be coming up at level 7 that makes well it done. easier to land. And you guys are totally right. You guys are absolutely right. <laughs> why, didn't, why, didn't I, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> uh, good call, team. Good call. We'll bring in the Vikings so I can show that off a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I don't think the shield is that big of a deal. Uh, but what is cool is you, 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 d you deal bonus damage to shields. So if they have a Zarya, eh. It's kind of a niche talent, I think. But um, yeah, it's, it works. I'm going to make chat a little bigger. Zoom in because I'm, I'm an old man. I'm an old man with old man eyes. Uh, the talent I picked up when I was playing him was the, talent. the Phylactery the talent. of Kel'Thuzad. And this is a really easy quest to complete that gives you the revive that Diablo can have, but you can choose when to do it. It's like they, they keep hearing my advice for other heroes and then uh, apply it to future heroes rather than the ones that I think need the thing. So, Flactory of Kel'Thuzad, collect 10 regen globes. 10. 10. That's m twice this many. That's it. It takes like 30 sec. Okay, it takes like three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, and Kel'Thuzad can be. The, the Kel'Thuzad's Flactory, which becomes an activatable Choose ability, it comes right up here, oh, can be activated while he's dead to immediately respawn. Okay. You do have to get the regen globes again to build that back up. But the other thing that you get here, there's a passive element to this as well, not only the active element. Kel'Thuzad heals for 10% of all spell damage dealt while the phylactery is charged. Holy crap! Like, amazing talent. I would say one of the best talents in the game. Just because if you're in a situation where, you know, both teams feed or something, but there's still one guy that can go in on the court, boom, you're alive again and you, and you can stop it. Like, this could be a game-saving talent. And it also gives Kel'Thuzad sustain throughout the whole game. Because, again, it takes three minutes to get to get uh, 10 region globes. It's absolutely nothing. So, fantastic talent and not one that I would overlook at all uh, if you want to pick up Kel'Thuzad. Then we have Armor of the Arc Lich. The cooldown is 25 seconds, so a little long. And uh, you're going to activate to gain 50 physical armor for four seconds. Upon activation, nearby enemies take 99 damage and are slowed by 35% for I'm um, getting pinged on on, uh, on WhatsApp. They're like, hey, are you streaming? I'm like, yeah. I mean, no. why don't you know that? What's going on? <laughs> why, don't, why don't you know that? Three minute for 10 globes is stretched. Yeah, I mean, for you maybe. Yeah. Um... Then, um, 
I would consider this if they have a tracer. And honestly, that's about the only situation I would consider it in. Chilling. Um he does suffer from a lot of things that the slow mages in the game do, like uh, Jaina. Jaina doesn't have uh, very many escapes. Kel uh, Kael'thas does... Oh, we can't call Kael'thas KT anymore! All right, his name is going to go back to Salamia Shalinore. Um, if uh, someone's jumping in on Kael'thas, he does have the gravity lapse, and he can augment that to hit two players. You're very reliant as a Kael'thuzad for, like, landing that. And uh, maybe chaining them to something if there's something to chain them to. So keep that in mind. Uh, I think Phylactery of Kel'Thuzad is by far the best talent in this tier and would highly recommend it. Level 7. I'm going to not go in order here because this one's really cool and I think it opens up a lot of gameplay. So it might make Armor of the Archlich worth picking up if you also invest in Glacial Spike. This Choose becomes an activatable ability, and remember, you can move Choose these around. So, I mean, you're not really going to use Phylactery of Kel'Thuzad very much, so you can move that off to the right and just focus on this if you wanted to. Uh, but this allows you to make a pillar. It then blows up, and it deals uh, 368 damage at level 21. That may not sound very good to you, but allow me to open your mind because, uh, well, this, again, it's going to be difficult to show, but this, if they walked it, it can body block people. So you know those little, like, walkways on the Haunted Mines or something? This thing lasts for four seconds, and you can put this, like, if you see someone that's going through a little narrow pathway, boom, pop it right in front of them, lasts four seconds, they're not going to be able to pass through it. That's just part one of why it's cool. Uh, part two of why it's cool is because uh, you can chain to it. Isn't that so good? Isn't that good? Like, where are you guys go? Come back. I want to chain you to it. So if you time this right, you can throw out the chain and then have them explode on top of the pillar. Notice that the pillar once again has a delay for when it explodes. It's like everything that he does has a delay. Yes, right away. That's why he's so hard to play. Like, I was having such a hard time playing of just getting used to it. And it wasn't on quick cast, and I didn't like it. But yeah, if you can... So so let's let's try some things. It, it does take a, a bit of precision, so I'm probably going to mess it up. But this down, then we chain into Olaf, and then we want to root him in place, right? I put another pillar down because we don't have crowd. We don't have cool down. my bad. But, you know, you put the pillar down, chain them into it, drop this underneath of them, and then hit them with a death and decay. And that's the combo, and it's just hard to do. Because, <laughs> number one, they're going to start to run away. Hey, there you go. I did it. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Uh, they're going to start to run away the second they see the pillar come up. So you're going to want to make sure that all of these things are ready. Killing screen. And you just throw it out pretty quick. Uh, but can be very, very strong can be very, very strong. Then, uh, also at level 7, we have access to the Accelerated Decay. Each time an enemy is hit by Death and Decay, uh, they take 20% more periodic damage from Death and Decay for the next 4 seconds, stacking up to 6 times. So essentially, once you get your cooldown reduction, once you have this going, if you're just throwing out Death and Decays like crazy, then these guys are going to con continue to take bonus damage as they're standing in it. does have some pretty good synergy with the Plague Lands Town at level 1 that will increase the radius of this. So it might be a good way to get a really uh, reliable source of outgoing damage versus enemy players. So maybe your first few games on Kel'Thuzad, you would want to jump in and just be like, well, here we go, let's just throw this out. Um, because you don't have to do the ridiculously complicated Indeed. one E, E, W, Q combo that you have to do with the Glacial Spike. So that might be worth picking up if you are just checking them out for the first time. Also, it will increase your lane clear capabilities and potentially your ability to uh, clear a camp. I haven't tried clearing camps. I'm assuming he's going to be not the best at that. I'm just assuming. Uh, last but not least, Choose at level 7, we do have access to Chilling Touch. Every 8 seconds, Kel'Thuzad's next basic attack hits a nearby... Uh, next basic attack hits... Okay, this isn't my dyslexia kicking in. Every 8 seconds, Kel'Thuzad's next basic attack hits nearby enemies. 
dealing spell damage instead of physical damage. And so, so is it an AOE? Choose a talent. That was weird. So every so we have a buff down here showing that it's up. Oh, that's cool. I like. I mean, it's a long cooldown. Oh, that could be fun. Oh, I like that. We are victorious. All right, yeah, that's all right. You might be able to get that. <laughs> It's kind of fun, uh, and it's it's once again AOE clear that would affect minions and mercenaries. So I mean, you'd clear a minion wave in probably just one Q and one auto attack pretty easily. So it seems like, and it does it does magic damage. That's so interesting, actually. So it has a thirty percent slow. It does magic damage instead of physical, or spell damage instead of physical, which means characters like Johanna and Arthas. Wait, is Arthas? Arthas is physical, right? Yeah. They just don't take, like, we just bypass their armor that they have baseline. ETC as well, you could just bypass that and hit them really hard. That's cool. I like that. And it also gives you a much more reliable way of slowing someone down and uh, having potential to escape because it's just every eight seconds, there's a 30% slow, I and mean, I can walk away now. Not bad. Not bad. So level 10, his heroic abilities, the first one we have here is Frost Blast. Uh, launch a meter of ice at an enemy hero. Upon impact, the meter deals 168 damage to its target and deals 481 damage to enemies in the air. All enemies hit by a frozen... It's a, it does damage in a roots. <laughs> in a big area. So the Vikings are running away over here. Maybe. Look at that. Look at that! Isn't that cool? Uh, that is a 100 second cooldown, though. So, uh, you know, you're not going to use it all the time. But it's basically, it's basically a frost pyroblast. And it hits everyone in the area. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That was actually my first time using that one. That was a lot. That was, there's a genuine smile on my face. That was better than I expected it to be. Uh, then the other option that we have at this level is the Shadow Fissure. And this is the one that I picked up because on the surface, it says, uh, it, it seems like it would be the easiest, like, okay, so 15 second cooldown, right? I can use it all the time. Obviously, that one's going to be better than the 100 second cooldown other heroic ability. But that's not actually the case. So, Shadow Fissure, create it, well, may not be the case. It's not definitive. Uh, create a fissure anywhere on the battleground that explodes after 1.5 seconds, dealing 756 damage to enemy heroes in the area. That sounds amazing. Choose and when it lands, it is amazing. Don't get me wrong, I was having a lot of fun with this, but here's the problem. You see how long this takes? First of all, spell effect, 10 out of 10. That's, that's terrifying. But it takes so long to form that the only people I was able to reliably hit it on were chromies that were charging up their combo, and then I could just throw that out. Does have global range. So you could use it to interrupt things like shrine captures, or you know someone becoming the Dragon Knight. You can do things like that. And credit where credit's due, it does make the combo that he has more effective and much more difficult once again to pull off. So we would want to go for Barb Chain, Phylactery, Glacial Spike, and then Shadow Fissure, and then the combo now looks something. God, it just getting in position for this seems daunting. The combo now looks something like this. So yeah, you can do that. If you wanted to. It's just a lot of button presses. It's a, it's a lot. It's yeah, you gotta play smart cast for that, boys. Yeah, you got it. 2,611 damage in that combo. But you got to play smart cast for that, boys. 
No! Why do you reset right then? I look stupid. Again, exact same amount, 2,611. So, it's good. It's real good. Uh, then at level 13, we have Icy Grasp. Increases Frost Nova's slow duration by 1.5 seconds. Again, Frost Nova has two different circles. The outside circle, just like Brightwing's Q, and the inside circle deal dif do different things. The inside roots. The outside slows, but they both deal damage. So this is only buffing the outside circle, as far as I understand it, of the, the, the Frost Nova. So keep that in mind. I feel like nine times out of 10, you want the center to be the main focus. Probably. Uh, then Chains of Ice, after Kel'Thuzad, after his stun expires, the targets are slowed by 70%. Makes the combo easier to land. They're going to be in that longer. They're not going to be able to move out. And you can more, th more than likely land the full thing if they can't quite move. Choose a talent. So, again, the combo. Of course they have damage immunity. Of course they do. So that just ensures that once the target starts to move away from the spike, that they're gonna be slowed a little bit longer and not gonna be able to maneuver too far away from where they were chained here. Okay, um, then at le oh, excuse me, there is one more. Pulling two heroes together with chains of Kel'Thuzad reduces its cooldown by four seconds. By completing Blight, we also get cooldown reduction at 15 hits. So we are getting two seconds off once that's working. Maybe it's just a tooltip error and it's not showing up, uh, but that's not currently uh, interacting with anything. So two seconds off from 15 skills hit, and then two more seconds brings your cooldown down to eight seconds. Mm -hmm. So you could be tying people together all the time, and sounds good. Sh should work great. I mean, it's just more reliable. You pull people in like crazy. You know how many times I've heard this intro song? <laughs> they keep doing rivers. I mean, credit where credit's due. They're working hard over there. A lot harder than I am. A lot, a lot harder than I'm working. Uh, then we have Arcane Echoes. Hitting a hero with Death and Decay reduces its cooldown by 1.25 seconds. So that means we're getting two seconds off with Blight at 15 skill shots. We could potentially get another second off here, three seconds off. And then another one and a half, 1.25. So it's 4.25 seconds off of our cast with Q, which would bring it down to what? Just it's not even two seconds. So you could just throw that out all the time. Again, if you're looking for a reliable way to deal damage with with Kel Kel'Thuzad, did I say Kel'Thuz earlier? I feel like it did. If you say if you want a reliable way of dealing damage, and it's also going to give you really really good lane clear, um, just, just throw out Qs. It seems fine. It seems good. Just do that. You know what, Jasmine? I agree with you. Done. So, um, definitely if you're going Q build, pick that up. If you're not going Q build, I don't think it brings that much to the table. Uh, then we have Hungry and Cold. Enemies rooted by Frost Nova take an additional 106 damage at level 23. Um... Each time they are damaged by Kel'Thuzad during the next six seconds. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder Choose if that would combo with the death and decay damage. Choose a talent. That's interesting, actually. Choose a talent. So, yeah, let's do that. And then we'll do Shadow Fissure. This one doesn't matter. And then Hungering Cold. So enemies rooted by Frost Nova take an additional 98 damage each time they are damaged by Kel'Thuzad. So. It's pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good time you got there, Kel'Thuzad. That, uh... That does a lot of stuff. 
that's for sure. So, well, I mean, that's not even complicated. I think I messed up there. So. That does proc off of Death and Decay. So we want to do something like this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, just gonna do three and a half thousand damage casually with a single root here, no big deal. Oh, and then throw in some more auto attacks too. We can't forget those. Oh my goodness. So, honestly, this talent makes me think that the combo build isn't even worth doing. Because the combo build is so complicated. And this is just like, yeah, just root him. That's so much easier. Uh, but we do have one more talent we need to take a look at at this level range. And that talent is Power of Ice Crown. Stunning, rooting, or slowing enemy heroes grant 6% spell power for 10 seconds. Stacking up to five times. Now, I know Solid Jake Guga really liked this talent. He was selling people out, uh, sell, selling people on it. I picked it up in my game, and I didn't see much of an impact. I didn't notice too much yeah, of a difference. Like Number one, I don't think we're getting this, the cooldown reduction that we should be. Oh my god, I did that combo without having our... Light quest completed, which means the damage would be even higher than what we already saw. It'll do even more than 3,000 damage. Okay, all right, all right, we're focusing. So uh, basically, if you hit someone with your W or your E at all, right, this doesn't do any, no. So your W or your E at all, you are going to slowly but surely Build up, increase spell power down here, which does add up quickly. But me personally, in the game I was trying it out, the, the amount of situations that I could actually land the root effectively was pretty few and far between. But that being said, we get 75% spell power increases from our trait. If we keep this quest going, we get another um, what is it? Fi 15? No. 6% stacking up to 5 times. So, another 35%. Math. Hold on. 30%. Yeah, 30%. So, um, obviously, that's a lot of damage. Obviously. Um, if you wanted to do... The problem is that, like, this is so easy to move out of. And chaining two people together is not as reliable as just throwing out a cube. So I don't, I want like when hungering cold, when, when that lands, like when you get a frost nova, it's like all of a sudden I can go in. You know, I can do everything. I have no cooldowns and I press a lot of buttons and damage isn't that high. Um, but I don't want a build that is so heavily reliant on landing that every time. You know what I mean? Yes, if you, if you get good at KT and you do this stuff and you land it every single time, you're, you're going to be okay. But keep in mind, you have to keep this up for 10 seconds, and your W ability is going to have an 8-second cooldown. So if you miss one time, this is going to be gone. At least with your W. I mean, you can still chain people, but you get what I'm saying. This is like the fireworks going off, because you know you can go in and deal a lot of damage, and this is the... This is the nuclear reactor. You know, it's steady. It keeps going. It'll power everything. But um, I think Hungry and Cold is just honestly more exciting. That analogy wasn't perfect, but you get where I'm going with that. You get, you get where I'm going with that. Uh, then at level 20, we do have Death Chill. When Frost Blast Roots expires, enemies are slowed by 40% for three seconds. Heroes, I guess that would count towards the quest that we were just talking about as well. Uh, would it work with the auto attack? Yes. And the auto attack would be on an eight second cooldown as well. So I didn't take that auto attack talent when I played him, so maybe that would have been the, the, the link as well. That would have made it felt a little bit better. And remember, this heroic ability here does have a 100 second cooldown, but if you can chain all this stuff up and then use the ult, obviously that's gonna deal a lot of damage. So there is an argument for that. That's a good point, Jack. Good job. 
Uh, but yeah, um, it's going to slow them by 40% for three seconds. Heroes killed what under the effect of Frost Blast initially released another Frost Blast <laughs> explosion. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> the dark void awaits you. <laughs> oh, Vikings, come back. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. Good. Untouchable. Uh, yes, yeah, it's a pretty good talent. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. For the record, this is gonna have the same effect the pyroblast does, where the you know you're gonna have you're gonna have the person that's like, oh, pyroblast is on me. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go that way for a second, and then there won't be a problem, you know. But Get a mosh pit going? <laughs> Something like that? <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. That would be pretty crazy. Choose a talent. Uh, then a talent. also at level 20, we have Shifting Malice. Activate to dash forward, dealing 251 damage to enemies in a path. The takedowns reset the cooldown of Shifting Malice. So activate to dash forward. Deal the cooldown is 240 seconds? Right. This better be amazing. What? What? Are you kidding? So it's kind of like Genji? Takedowns. Oh, any takedown. Okay, okay, okay. Any takedown resets the cooldown. I was thinking we had to kill them with it. But I was like, that's no damage. That is rather interesting. Eh, it's okay. Does allow you a little bit of an escape at level 20, which is like the same time that uh, it's the same time that Jaina would get hers, right? I think. So I mean, that's okay. I'm not overly impressed. Like death chill was like amazing, but uh, what's cool down for the other ult? So we'll get to that in just a second. Don't worry, because at level 20, the other ult becomes really interesting. Choose a talent. Uh, the other level 20 talent is the Damned Return. Activate to create a Shade of Naxxramas that casts 50, that lasts excuse me, 15 seconds and mimics Kel'Thuzad's casts of Death and Decay. Choice. So, if you went for Death and Decay build, all of a sudden you put this down, and he's just going to copy what you do. So very similar to the Sands of Time from Chromie, except it's not going to be moving around a lot. Another soul. Uh, but yeah, you can replace him as soon as it dies, and it doubles the amount of stuff you're going to be doing with your Q. So if you went, if you went for a Death and Decay build, there's no reason not to pick this up. At least that's the way I see it. And again, you can as soon as it expires, you can move up the next one and have that ready to go. Yeah, seems good. Uh, and then I saved this one for last because it's again. This one sounds so impressive. It really does. The might of the scourge. What this does is, if you hit a hero with your ult, it, it you have no cooldown. So let's let's go into this with let's go into Choose this with a build that we would Choose actually use. The Choose glacial spike. If we're picking up shadow fissure, we want to go for the combo build. We're gonna Choose go for was that the right one? Yeah. And then uh, bonus damage here. Yeah. No, disabling enemies. We'll do that one. So uh, this is gonna look this is gonna look really strong. Now I can cast my ult again. Or at least I should have been able to, I missed. 
Excellent. It's gonna look really strong, guys. I just missed everything. I actually don't want to use this against Why the Vikings. I want to use this against a hero that actually has a health bar. Entertaining. If you're in, can you what go away? Did I say about if you're in, can you, um... Curiosity. Can you... You the fuck it. Go away. Stop. Okay. Hi, goes Daniel. Yeah, yeah, you're hurting me. So, because we landed it, we could then cast it again. <laughs> and just keep doing that. Remember, this is global. If anyone is taking damage on, or if anyone is contesting something on the map and they're able to throw out crowd control, you can effectively hit the shadow fissure every single time. That's so loud. Specifically, the quest completion. Yo, go Dan, what are you doing? Go, stop it. Well, that was stop rather it. entertaining. Yo, let me show it off again. Come fight me. Where you at? The dark void awaits. Good. It does some good damage. That does some real good damage. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at that, the actual damage on a target dummy. Uh, toggle cooldowns really quick. Three thousand nine hundred and eighty-four, and once again, we could cast this right away. I don't think there's going to be a way that you can land this twice on a single target unless someone else is coming in and chaining crowd control with you. So if if you go in and do your combo, then a Malfurion comes in and roots, or a Uther stuns, or a Taronda stuns. Taronda would probably be amazing with this, by the way, just because of the Hunter's Mark. Uh, would make this even more effective. Whoa. Why was that so much higher? What happened? Choose a Why was it so much higher? Choose a talent. <laughs> that was 5,000 damage. Choose a talent. Yeah. Yeah. Choose a talent. Yeah. Choose a talent. Yeah. Choose a talent. Okay. Choose a mm -hmm. talent. Choose a talent. I wonder if we're getting the thing where our quest completion keeps stacking. And then I would want that, and then I would want that. Okay. Oh my God! It got, okay, okay, okay. No, I have to. I have to restart it because there's no way that damage is intended. There's no way. We have to be getting more damage every time our quest completes. We have to be. I refuse to believe that he's capable of doing six thousand burst damage. Choose a talent. I'm not Choose buying it. Choose a talent. Um, we want Choose the spike. We want that. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. And then complete quests. That's it. That's it. That's it. He's too good. He's too. Did I get two stacks though? No, I didn't. It's too good. <laughs> I know you guys were saying I missed my cue. I just didn't want to believe you. I thought it was reasonable the first time. Uh, so, if you're looking for a build Choose a talent. for Kel'Thuzad when he is introduced to the Nexus worldwide, which, for the record, they never told me when that was. Just for the record. Um, we have a few options, actually. I think he has a really diverse talent build. If you want to play easy mode, you go for Choose your Q talent. talents. This is going to incre increase your lane clear. This is going to increase probably your damage throughout the majority of the game. But you're not going to have those breathtaking combos like the ones that we just saw. So Phylactery Choose is good talent. to go all the time. Uh, we definitely want that done. We'll go ahead and complete quests for Phylactery. Then we want Accelerating Decay. So they're just gonna take more damage over time. Choose a talent. Uh, probably Frost Blast. It's nice and easy. Nothing complicated about Choose it. Again, we're going for an easy build here. Then we would either want. I think either of these would be fine. Either Icy Grasp or Chains of Ice. With Chains of Ice, you have to link them to someone else for that to take effect. So Icy Grasp in this situation might be easier because. 
you simply throw it out. If they don't get rooted, they get slowed. But Chains of Ice, I, I have a hard time recommending a talent that only happens if you miss the main intention of your ability. Unless there is a slow effect as well. It means inside and slow. Maybe it always slows. Maybe I didn't comprehend it correctly. So maybe that would be good. We'll see. And then reduce cooldown, and then this guy that casts Qs. Now remember, I don't think we're getting the properly reduced cooldown. No, we're not. It is bugged right now. But this would be down to a 1.75 second cast, right? So you and your little, your damned return would be able to do this every one and a half seconds, basically. That seems really reliable. And as you can see, it would probably be pretty good at clearing lanes. So it's an easy way for Kel'Thuzad to deal damage. If you miss, you're not punished that hard. Whoa. Going ham. Dang. Uh, if you're missed, you're not punished that hard. And then look at that easy lane clear. Simple. Straightforward. You got it. Also, I think that the shade stacks up the damage faster, from what I could tell. Oh yeah, look at that! So the damage gets stacks up really quickly because both pools of death and decay count towards the the quest where they stand in it and take ticking damage. That is good. That is solid. And that's not difficult at all. Every everyone could do that. It's just putting your Q up here. It does have a little delay like Chromie's Q, but pff, that's nothing. You, I believe in you. I believe in you. If you're looking for something a little more complicated. Then, well, we got that too. So we would want to go for, honestly, with this, I don't know. It's one of these two. A talent. Mm. Let's go for Blighted Frost. Choose a talent. Flattery, Choose a talent. Chilling Touch, Choose a talent. Shadow Fissure. Choose a talent. Eternal enigma we'll do the slow. I'm talent. becoming a believer in the slope. And then, obviously, we would want the spell power to kind of bring this all together. So, honestly, I might even go Shifting Malice with this. I just don't see a situation where I can reliably land Might of the Scourge. It has too much of a delay. So, complete quest. Which may have increased us, like, to the sun and back. We don't know. So, then you, uh, quite simply... Stop. Auto attack, people, right? Wait, no, I didn't do it quite right. What did I miss? I wanted the bonus damage from Hunger and Cold. I didn't want the spell damage. Choose a talent. Yeah, Choose a talent. that was it. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. There we go. Choose a talent. So we just want to attack someone with everything that we have, have after the root lands. And you can end up doing a lot of bonus damage. We got all of our cooldowns instead of reset. We should be good. Chile. Look at that. 5,785. And that's literally just pressing every button on your keyboard. That is so straightforward. Uh, that one seems pretty good. And then we also showed off a lot of examples where you can do this with Glacial Spike as well. Choose so you would still pick Choose the change, still pick Phylactery, I think, Choose anyway. Glacial Spike, Shadow Fissure. Um, I went for Chains of Ice because that was the whole intention Choose here anyway. And then additional damage here as well. Um, I just don't... I like Hungry Cold Choose too much because you're, you are able to apply so many different effects to one character at a time that I think it's just... I think it's just going to be better. So it would look like this. And again, an easy 6,000 bonus or er, burst damage right there on the spot. So uh, I'm going to have the audio technician take a look at the audio here. I want to be coming out of both ears if I can. You know, I feel like that's a feature on YouTube that a lot of people would like. Show the revive. I mean, it's literally just you press the one key. It's like you die and you press the one key. I can go die, though. I can do that for you. Chilling. 
Keep in mind, we're going to res almost instantly anyway, but I can skip this four second cooldown and just pop up by hitting the one key. And then you would have to get 10 region globes again in order to get that going. Uh, do the same build with the shade and probably get 7k damage. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. The, even if we're not going for death and decay at that with this build, that might be better. Choose a talent. You have a point. Choose a talent. Choose so, Shadow Fissure, that one. Choose a talent. Oh, that's so true because with the shade out, we're going to be dealing. Each time we deal damage to the target with the Hungering Cold talent, they take an additional 101 damage. And each tick of Death and Decay counts for that total. So, if the shade's out and he's dealing damage too, then that would add more damage to the total. That is a good point. I didn't think about that. So the combo now looks something like... Oh, I picked the wrong talent. The combo would look... Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Something Choose a talent. like... Choose a talent. Choose a talent. This. So shade first. We just added another thousand. Oh, he just put on another thousand. I'm getting out of here before we find another way to just make this even even worse. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> like, keep in mind that that's hard to do. That's going to be hard to land. But there's going to be people out there that can just land it every time. They're going to just, it's going to, they're going to hit with it every time. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't take it. I can't take it. All right, guys. Thank you for stopping by. I'm going to be doing streams uh, for like the next three and a half hours, I think. That's what I'm scheduled for. Uh, we are going to take a break and start up another stream because, you know, YouTube, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to keep them separated. You know, you watch a video, you get what you came for, and then we'll do another stream right after this. I am going to have them uh, listen to what this sounded like. We can uh, see if we can sort out if we were in one ear and why that was. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon.